We are live. Are we live? Are we live on Facebook? We're live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Does everybody on Facebook know we're on Facebook? Uh, or just the people who follow us? Well, at least five people do. <laughs> we got five. <laughs> we got five watching already. You know what? That's three more than last week. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Mike Neighbors, the uh, host from Funny 820. And this is Friday at 420. Of course, it's not Friday at 420. It's like noon on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, noon on a Wednesday. But it will be live on Friday at 420, this Friday at 420 on Funny 820, if you can follow. Uh, let's get right into the show. Let's get going because we got a lot, a lot of fun to have here. Uh, let's uh, introduce our panel as we always do. Uh, he's already nodded off, so this is exciting. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, say hi to Manola Santanos. Uh, no, I was just trying. I always try to share it from the 420 thing onto oh. Facebook. That's what I do at the beginning. That's why. But yeah, anytime I'm thinking, I look like I'm in another world. No kidding. Yeah, you go. It's... You go full mannequin. Do you? Uh, are you not wearing glasses anymore for a reason? Didn't you used to wear glasses, or am I crazy? I no, I I wear glasses. Um, uh, the thing is, is that I've noticed on the Zoom calls that my beautiful blue eyes show up much nicer without the glasses. I know I, there's a reflection, right? Is I'm 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 wondering if it bothers people or should I take a? I like to, well, anyway. Yeah, Hello. you got the tag on yours. That's part of your shtick. Uh, let's uh, welcome to the show our uh, other co-host. Uh, he's uh, the one in the ball cap there. There he is, Patrick Capolino. Buongiorno. How are you, Patrick? I'm good. That's good, That's man. That's good. <clears throat> What's going on in your life? What's happening? Uh, no, I'm going camping tomorrow. Are you really? <clears throat> yeah, me and Lindsay are going up to uh, Algonquin. For, oh, uh, I didn't. Who you didn't what? Think it was a camper? I, I, I did not think you would be a camper. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I was right. But I'm going to give it a try. Okay, well, that's, you know what, you'll report back next week on Friday at 4.20 yeah. at some other random time. If I don't pay you uh, and please, let's welcome our special guest to this edition of Friday at 4.20. Everybody, put your hands together for Leanne Maladin. Leanne, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm already, you... I'm already kind of camping. I'm in a little cabin up north. <laughs> so get ready for mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you up north? Not precisely, but uh, almost precisely. Where? Just rough area. I, I'm in. Well, I'm in the town of Tomogamy, which is uh, north of North Bay. So that's be that's beautiful. Up. Call from the city. It's a long drive, but whatever. Uh, and and Leanne, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, not only uh, have you done the stand up comedy, but you teach stand up comedy. Yeah, at Second City in Toronto, and actually, right now, all the classes are online. So I'm teaching in the Chicago uh, classes too. <laughs> and yeah. So they, they put it because it's online. They could put all the training centers together. So now I have like students from the uh, like the Hollywood one and the Chicago one. It's been kind of cool. Yeah. So what what I'm just going to ask just a kind of a general question. What would be kind of the first foundational building block that you would want to find in a stand-up comic. We have a lot of people who listen to Funny 820 who love stand-up comedy and would love to try it one day. What's that sort of building block that you go, I really need this for your foundation to build whatever you become off of? I don't know. I just think like building good premises is the key and having a good clear premise and something that is interesting. Like it doesn't necessarily have to come off funny but people have to be interested in hearing more i think that's that's the start of the joke right so if you start off well there then yeah. uh then i wish i knew that 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> where were you 20 years ago i could have used you you know what I, I always i always built all of the like i do some funny stuff on the radio station some would question whether it was funny or not but my premise always was I always try to find educational things or interesting top, like interesting things to talk about. So that even if you don't find what I say about it funny, at least you maybe learn something. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kept me employed for 30 years, so I'll keep going with it. All right. Uh, what do you say we get to our game? Uh, we have uh, uh, 12 official envelopes with random topics. Uh, over here, I have my Plinko board, so that's how we're going to determine what your random topic is. So I'm going to Plinko for you right now, 
uh, Leanne, and we'll see what your first topic is. Oh, number eight. Ooh, oh, eight is never good. <laughs> topic number eight on this edition of Friday at 420 on Funny 820 with Leanne Maladin. Leanne, uh, your question on Friday at 420, uh, you got to hang the toilet paper up there at the cottage in Tamagami. Uh, are you going over the top or are you going under? Oh, <laughs> well, right. See, right now it's just sitting there. <laughs> I, I am not a reloader. I don't know. I'm <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but I, I would say that um, if I were to take the time, I would do it over the top. Okay. <laughs> I I have two daughters who also are not, I call them, they do leaners where they kind of lean it on the empty roll yeah. and just sit there, they're leaners. And I go, that's not even an option. Okay. Uh, Leanne, I'm glad you're over the top. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of someone else who's <laughs> over the top, Manolo Santanos is always over the top. What what are you, buddy? Over the top or under? Which way is the best way to hang the toilet paper? Sometimes, uh, a lot of times I run out of toilet paper, so I just use one sock, but I put that over the top of my sock, and oh. I just go I just go the rest of the day without my sock, with one sock. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I, I'm over to the top, but I my, big, my biggest pet peeve is that when you go to a public washroom to use the toilet paper, and Leanne, I don't know if it's like, can you tell me if it's like this in the girls' side? The, they put a, they put the the, the 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 thing the unit too so low that when you're trying to get toilet paper and you know, it's never hanging down so you have to put your hand in it like you're trying to steal a bag of chips from a vending machine <laughs> and you're like this you're down you're like mission impossible you're like almost on the floor you feel like there's cables hanging off your back and you're like come on give me i just want to wipe my ass and like and, and like why ones where you have to slide the thing across at yeah. The yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so why why i this is the one if i had one question i could answer why that every washroom goes no lower lower <laughs> why does, does, do you any there's three people here someone tell me okay, we have no answer <laughs> It should actually be higher because mm -hmm. in the women, I, I don't know, I hover in a public washroom, so um, <laughs> higher would be better. I think it's because of child labor, Manolis. The can you, it's the kids putting it on. They're not tall enough. Can you? <laughs> can you <laughs> that makes sense, actually. Can you Can you hover and pee? That's amazing. Well, a lot of, most women can do that, right? Yeah. That's amazing to me. Yeah. Like, I guess if you're a shorter lady, it would be harder, right? But, like, I'm tall, so it works. It's like magic. <laughs> uh, Patrick Coppolino, uh, are you over the top or under when you're uh, hanging the toilet paper? Whatever it ended up being when I put it in. Oh, is wow. Where it is. But I, I'm more of a on the, on the back, like on the bowl thing. <laughs> okay. And then in my hand. And when it's in my hand, it's underneath. So you get like a nice slide okay. and it rolls in your hand. Uh, just in case you didn't think this had a purpose, uh, <laughs> there is an actual correct answer. Uh, what is it? The original patent for toilet paper was over the top. Just so people know. It's nice. I, I am. Technique. Pat, like that. He had a full. <laughs> yes. Okay. So they were folded out. I like that. I'm going to try that one. Okay. He just puts it on his finger and he spins it. Yeah. It's fantastic. I have, some right, I have some right here, but I don't use it for my uh, bomb. Why is that by your computer, Manolis? What, what do you think I? What do you think? You think the only thing I do here is talk to you guys? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Leanne. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, it had to come out sooner or later. There was no way we were getting through this no. entire episode. And it's noon, so he's used it three times. So <laughs> we're ready to go. <laughs> the can has the, the Vaseline ca intensive care cream right beside her. So everybody's ready to go. Why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all four of us just do it, pulling off. <laughs> all right. It's time for another topic. Uh, topic number one. This one's going to Patrick Coppolino. Your topic on Friday at 420, Patrick Coppolino. Perfect for this. It's a rainy day. <clears throat> Leanne was just talking about it's raining up there in Tamigami. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do on a rainy day, Patrick Coppolino? Mm, video games. <laughs> That's your favorite thing on every day. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. I I I don't love being outside to begin with, so <laughs> whatever I normally do sounds good when it's raining. It's just more justifiable, I guess. So does a rainy day though make you feel just a little bit less guilty about not going outside? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it gives you a free pass to go. Oh, I'm supposed to be in today. Yeah. <laughs> so anything you feel I don't know, good. eating. <laughs> okay, you got all the getting all the high water marks there. Manolis, what about you? What's your favorite thing to do on a rainy day? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I make sure I have enough toilet paper. That's all. If I don't, I go out. What I do like doing, honestly, I like going out and standing in the rain because that way the outside world matches my inside world. <laughs> oh, it's dark and dreary. <laughs> I don't know. I just like, uh, I don't know. I What I like to do on a rainy day, I do on a sunny day. I just I, I like going thrift shopping, to tell you the truth. You know what? This topic wasn't for you two, knobs. This one's for Leanne. Leanne, what do you like to do on a rainy day? I like to get high and take naps. Oh, a woman after my own heart. Yes. <laughs> I love that answer. I think that's my plan for today. I think that's as soon as you're done with us. I might go out inside into the rain at one point, but that's <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that that that's the best answer. That beats Patrick and Manolis's answers. I'll tell you. All right, Friday, Friday at four twenty. Our special guest, Leanne Maladin. Uh, we have uh, topic number four. This one's going to uh, Manolis. Uh, Manolis, your topic on Friday at four twenty. Uh, okay. This, you know what? And I don't want to get too serious. All right. Just let's get a little bit serious. And Leanne, okay. I'm glad you're here because you you teach stand up comedy, so this is important. Um, we have seen in recent days a lot of people going back and chastising people for things they have done in the past, and sometimes a really long time in the past, and now they're being called out, which calling them out is one thing, but then demanding that they be fired or lose their gig or whatever for something they did 10 or 15 years ago uh, is, is, is problematic. Let's just put it that way. So... Where is the line for old jokes that can't keep up with the times? Do, do we do we as comedians all agree that there's, you know, we did something 10 years ago. I'm not going to do it today. Are you, talking about, are you talking about jokes? Or are you talking about what things say people say on podcasts? Uh, I'm, I, you know what? Any of those things, but particularly jokes, I think particularly like I'm seeing a lot of comedians called out for blackface or for using the N word. Uh, but but it wasn't last week. It was in 1991. It was in 1983. Right. So, I mean, I just want you guys to weigh in on this. And I, and I don't want it to be a, a situation where we cause a lot of, of, of grief for people. But I think we all, as thinking adults, have an opinion on, you know, can we apologize and just move on? Or do I need to lose my job if I did something 15 years ago that you now find offensive? I, I think, you know, I don't think you should be losing your job for something you did 15 years ago because people... If you watch someone like um, Rogan and you see the kind of person he was a long time, not that Rogan did anything wrong, but he's involved into a guy that's like really thinks about every word he says, but not like in a safe way. It's just like he's not the same person he was 15 years. None of us were. But right. like with, with Joey Diaz, what bothers me with that is that they uh, everybody's trying to make a big deal of it. But it's like a scandal has to be at least a secret. It's like you can't go like. Did you hear what Joey D said about the girls at the comedy store and blah, blah, blah? Well, how'd you find out? Oh, he said it on a podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. What a scandal. The thing that he told everybody about probably several times. That's that's at least can it can at least if someone's trying to get someone to lose their job, can it at least be a secret then? Can it be still a scandal? Something, something that they that. tried to hide, something yeah. they tried not like, to. Oh, my God. You know the Joey Diaz, the guy that just speaks on whatever's on his mind. He, he you know what he did? Because he told me on a podcast. Like it's just right. enough. Everybody enough. Let's and just let and there's, I mean, whether with other stuff, it just let the law deal with it for at some point too. Like I mean, if someone did something wrong, isn't there a law for a reason? Isn't there courts and jails and aren't they for something? Well, I, you know, but but we're going through a cultural change. Go ahead, Leanne. I'll, I'll get you to weigh in on this. I was just going to say, well, unfortunately, like, we, I think we all know, like, 
you need to take justice into your own hands if you want justice to happen because the law doesn't do that for everybody but Mm -hmm. i totally like yeah like i grew up in the 80s i look at movies that i used to watch even as a kid and think that they were the best movies and like now if i had a kid i wouldn't even show it to them at all right so i just i think times have changed and i think you i think if people don't evolve with their jokes, they will just get left behind. Like, I think, um, like when I first started, I had a joke and it it wasn't, um, it wasn't a, like, it wasn't being cruel. It was about me going to a concert with a friend who was trans, a trans woman who just became trans. So I was kind of like joking that like she was new at it. And I wouldn't tell that joke today. Because right. I just feel like I I don't want to be that person. I don't want to push that line. Somebody else can push that. I'm fine within boundaries of popularity. I don't know. I, don't know. Like, I just want people to like me. So <laughs> well, it, sometimes it, it just doesn't. That joke doesn't suit the times anymore. We know things yeah. are changing. Yeah. I, just have this uh I'm just struggling a little bit with the retribution over something somebody did when the times were not as aware we were not as aware of who we were hurting and how many people we were hurting with some of our words and or actions so so let's go okay you know apologize and and let's move on and let's not attack them unless they are going to continue trying to pursue that if you're going to continue to do your trans jokes and they're not coming off as funny anymore then we have a problem, right? Yeah. And I know like we're all white people, um, but <laughs> as, as a woman, I guess I, you know, I could speak to discrimination and sexism and stuff like that. And yeah, like there's stuff that you see in shows and movies and things like that from the past and things that people say on stage. And I, you know, like, those kind of jokes have changed the things that you see on on tv that are are being said now and happening now it's all changed but um so i imagine like you know i imagine everybody is happy to see comics making changes with Mm -hmm. what they talk about and that um and and helping move our society forward and saying yeah we agree cultural change is important it's important that we identify these hurts and try to fix them. I just don't know that going back into the past is going to fix it. It's moving forward is how we have to fix it. Uh, Patrick Coppolino, what do you think, brother? Um, I kind of agree. Like even with what you said about it didn't happen last week; it happened 15 years ago. So I, I do, to an extent, think maybe people should be held somewhat accountable for things they may have said. But um, uh, yeah, if there's proof that they've evolved and changed, and with the times and stuff like that, I don't think it's right to like you know, dig up people's tweets from 20 for, from 10 years ago and, and make them lose their job for it. Like even like the thing that comes to mind for me is like the Kevin Hart thing with the, yeah. uh, the really homophobic tweets he made The a, they, I don't even think they were even funny, even at the time, they were just bad homophobic jokes that he <laughs> probably shouldn't have tweeted, but like people really wanted his career to be over for that. Um, I think people should deserve a chance to at least prove they've changed and apologize and, and move on. But um, but yeah. Well, those are some very intelligent answers. I didn't know we had such a smart group. <laughs> you me? But yeah, like I, you. I agree with uh, Leanne too. I was going to say like there couldn't be a better panel than a uh, four white people discussing <laughs> <laughs> offensive. Uh, uh, you know, well, although uh, although the problem, I- <laughs> <laughs> although some people point out that it's actually us who have to change. It's not right. I yeah. mean, it is the white people who have to change our thinking. So, yeah, maybe we do have a place to at least voice an opinion on that. Um, uh, Let's uh, delve into another topic. This one, Leanne, is for you. Uh, And uh, we're really going to change it up here. We're going to go from really serious to, hey, you're going for ice cream, Leanne. What flavor are you getting? Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm so boring. Oh, don't. Chocolate every time. Like, I'll try other ones. I'll be like, oh, give me a little bit of that one. Let me try it. And then I'll be like, mm, chocolate. I'm just like, I'm afraid that I'm going to get one and I'm going to be disappointed. So I know <laughs> chocolate, 
is yeah. never going to disappoint me. So I get the, the sugar cone with the chocolate ice cream. Well, if you were worried about being disappointed, I'm surprised you agreed to do this show. Um, <laughs> I'm lonely right now. <laughs> I love you. Uh, Leanne, uh, up there in Tamigami, you should be getting the moose tracks or something, shouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great ice cream. They have, they have, yeah, they have like all different ones, and I go and, and I'm like, mm, chocolate. <laughs> 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 I actually have some in the freezer. <laughs> Dr. Coppolino, what flavor are you getting when you're going for ice cream? Um, actually, we went to uh, took Esther for ice cream yesterday down at Hutch's on uh, Bay, and uh, like by the pier, and they have like twenty different items. Uh, and last time we got uh, a chocolate sundae or the tin roof. It's a chocolate sundae with peanuts on it. And uh, that one was good. And I was trying to get Esther to try a different one. And uh, she, of course, just wanted the, the $8 chocolate sundae that comes in one size only again. So <laughs> so I, have, I, I don't try too many uh, different flavors. Uh, I like uh, sherbet or sur sorbet, however you're supposed to pronounce it. But that's not really ice cream, right? That's like frozen water. Fro frozen water. <laughs> <laughs> Manolis, you, you keep putting the microphone in front of your face like you want to say something. I don't know. I forget <laughs> that I'm. I forget people can see me, so I don't even realize. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. What I, flavor uh, ice cream are you getting, buddy? I'm treating. I I like. Um, I have problem. The only problem with ice cream I have, I love ice cream. I love like a vanilla ice cream, but you know how they dip it in the chocolate and then it's like that hard shell. Yeah, There's something about that. It's just like. It's just two. It's like uh, it's like two ice creams in one. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like rolling, it's rolling your joints into keep. It's a beautiful day, you know. But, but when I was uh when I was a kid, we never had ice cream, but we always had the like we'd run out of ice cream, but we had the cones. So I there'd be no cookies, and then I'd be bored, and I wanted something, so I just eat a cone. You know how depressing it is to eat a cone with, with no, no ice cream. cream? <laughs> yeah. So every that's no, why actually, I don't think I don't. <laughs> it's so so I used to do that because my dad wouldn't go out and get ice cream. So I would just say, and there was no cookies. My my dad's my parents are European, so they're like, no, no sugar. So I'd be like eating like dry cones out of boredom, watching TV, <laughs> and then so now when I get an ice cream now now. I don't want to do it because eventually I get to the cone and then that's when the memories hit. Like I was like, oh yeah, I remember this. And I'd like, I'll throw the cone away. I just eat that ice cream. Well, because... you know what? I mean, what we got? We got dry cones. We got freaking uh, just sherbet and chocolate ice cream. On the weekend, I had uh, a two flavor ice cream uh, cone at the uh, store. I had bubble gum with cotton candy. Now you're talking ice cream flavors, kids. There you go. Those are the two I tried to get yeah. Esther to try. I thought for sure she would. I'm like, you want cotton candy? No. That's only $3. Can I ask a quick cool question? Expensive. Yeah, go ahead. Leanne, tell, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Were you on The View? Yes. Can, Mike, can you can you tell Mike about that? Because I, I remember you were on The View, but how that all happened, I guess? Or yeah. You know she was on The View, Mike? Did not know that. No. Thank you. Yeah, I was in it. I was in a contest, um, and it was uh, America's Funniest Teacher, and um, because I'm also a teacher, and um, I was the only Canadian on, and it was like all week they had one person on, and I had two minutes. All I could do was two minutes of jokes, and like it was like live and everything, so I had to be on, and and uh, there was like a panel that was critiquing, and like Whoopi Goldberg was on my panel, and Joy Behar, and so it's pretty cool. I have like quotes from um, quotes from Whoopi and Joy on my website because they <laughs> they they liked me and they said some good things. So it was really cool. It was it was probably the most exciting day of my life. Really, That's I got awesome. to the yeah, I got to the green room and they, like I had sent in my jokes ahead of time. And then when I got there, they're like, oh, yeah, that one joke, you can't do that joke on TV. And I was just like, oh, OK. So I had to, like, switch it up at the last minute. And it still had to fall in that two minutes. So it was pretty stressful. But again, yeah, most exciting experience of my life, probably. <laughs> Who was the nicest view cast member? 
Um, Whoopi was really nice. But you know who was a guest on the show who was super nice? Brooke Shields. Oh, wow. She was talking to me like in the green rooms and in the elevator and stuff. And she was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool when you meet somebody famous and they're really nice. Because we always kind of assume they're kind of going to be, you know, you just don't know what to expect. And when they're really nice, you're like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Yeah. And Susan Lucci was there. You know, Susan Lucci. Yes. In Days of Our Lives. All My Children. Yeah. All My Children. Same Jeff, really. But, um, and she looked like, um, like I thought, I don't know, like she just looks beautiful. Like she's like a grandma two times over, and she looks like she's like thirty-two. And and I, and I, I was like looking close at her face to see. What, she's gorgeous. She's perfect. Yeah. What an what an awesome experience, Leanne Maladin, our special guest on this edition of Friday at four twenty. Thank you for joining us. If you're joining us on Facebook, if you are hearing this, you're joining us on Funny Eight Twenty, and we appreciate you dropping in. And we're uh, well, we're heading into your weekend, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it is time for another topic. Now, this one I'm going to toss at Manolis Zantanos. Uh, what kind of comic do you say you are? Are you just like an observational humor comic? What are you? Sexually deprived comic? How, how do you describe yourself? Uh, I, I do. I'm pretty filthy at times, but uh, I think I'm between being a dirty comic and a storyteller at the same time. Okay. So. Uh, if you were not that, what kind of comic would you be? Is there a kind of comedy that you couldn't pull off, but that you would love to to try or that you think would be so much fun to be a prop comic or whatever. I mean, is there something that you think I just can't pull it off, but I wish I could do this. Uh, I think uh, I'm trying to think of a comic on top of my head that I couldn't do for sure would be someone like, I guess Jerry Seinfeld would be pretty cool. Cause I do like his material. And I always, I always find that he has like really cool angles that I'm like, Oh, why didn't I think of that? Or, uh, <laughs> Or um, even a, a Doug Stanhope is a little bit more uh, gritty, but even his like the way he like talks about um, you know whether it's like sometimes about politics or just the way things are is like there. You, I'm smart enough to understand, but not smart, smart enough to like uh, weave a joke like that. You know. You know. Dr. Coppolino, what kind of comic would you be? Uh, well, I am mostly a storyteller, but I I wish I could. Uh... I wish I could just be more silly. I love like the one-liner comics, like impressionists and stuff like that. Um, if I could do like yeah, a whole hour of that, that'd be awesome. Now you you do uh, some pretty cool impressions, and I, I saw you were doing some uh, online there with the cartoons beside you. Yeah. Would you try? Would you try impressions in the future? Uh, on stage, maybe. I don't know. It's hard. Like even when I do like videos of them, there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. It's it's harder to be <laughs> to be quick, but I don't know. I would when I first started doing comedy, I was writing one liners and then I ended up just giving a lot of my jokes to guys that were actually like better at doing that. So, but yeah, <clears throat> that's what I, I I've with. seen some some videos by uh, David Green that are blowing me yeah. away. This guy is so oh, damn. And he's not just puns. one. Yeah, just puns, specifically puns. Oh, and it's just it's such a rare thing to find somebody who. It's not rare necessarily to find someone doing pun humor, but it is rare to find someone good at it that makes you laugh. Oh, yeah. Uh, so good. Yeah. That's really good at putting bits through his stories, though. That's a, He has right. a unique style, which I think is cool. He Thanks. does, definitely. Leanne, uh, you're a teacher of this form. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your own style and what kind, what, what you wish you maybe could pull off that you, that you just don't think fits you. Yeah, I do like one-liners and short jokes, like stories and observational, really. Um, but if I could do some, like something I would want to do, and this is <laughs> this is controversial because a lot of people hate them. But like, I so I wish I could just like pull out a guitar and like sing a funny song with my guitar. I just, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm don't. I only know how to play two songs on the guitar, <laughs> and my singing voice is worse than my speaking voice <laughs> so, there you go. but those are great though because anytime you do anything with a guitar on stage guaranteed applause break when you're done no matter I how it. it went i love guitar people <laughs> you might you know what my favorite thing is leanne is when they bring out the guitar they do the five <clears> or seven <throat> minute set and never use the guitar yeah <laughs> and oh. leave 
Like, just look cool with it. Maybe I'll yeah, do they'll have it on. And everybody's like waiting for the song. So the joke is like, they just like, thanks, everybody. He's like, everybody's like, wait, what? Why'd you? So he just carried a guitar yeah. for no reason. I'm pretty sure uh, Dana I... Carvey did that. Oh, did he? Yeah, like on a whole hour special. I'm pretty sure he like, then he picked it up and then he like strummed it and then, and then just walked away. <laughs> Uh, uh, Dimitri Martin, I'm sure he's not the only one, but the way Dimitri Martin plays music behind his rapid fire jokes, yeah, uh, it's some really brilliant. Now, I'm going to share this with you because I think this is, it was uh, the very first time I, because I'm not a stand up comic, Leanne, I don't know, I, I, but I've done it. So, I, you know, amateur nights or whatever. The very first time I did it was at Yuck Yucks in downtown Hamilton. Um, and <laughs> unbeknownst to me you shouldn't bring a guitar i brought a guitar man so i i can't sing i'm a, not a very good guitar player but i'd written this parody song of this land is your land but it was during the time of the quebec referendum so i'd rewritten it so that we cut quebec out of this land is your land um and i thought it was kind of cute so i got up um i played it uh, the guitar, I played the song. It seemed to go over okay. I did a few other jokes, blah, blah, blah. But Donnie Coy was emceeing that night. And I am telling you, he did the next 10 minutes on how horrible I was as a human being for for singing, for playing a guitar, for having a guitar, uh, for, you know, it was, I, I, and I thought, God, that guy hates me. But, you know, it was just Donnie being Donnie. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was a disaster. I love that everybody's first experience doing comedy in Hamilton involves Donnie Coy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donnie Coy, so he threw an ashtray at me one of the first <laughs> times I did stand up. That is true story. <laughs> <laughs> well, he never threw anything at me, so I guess I won. Yeah. Did I win? I think so. He couldn't. He could say my name, and he goes, he didn't know my name, and he goes, he introduced me like, this, and uh, here is, here he is, and walked off. <laughs> He didn't even yeah. try. He didn't even make up a name. Yeah. Here he is. Uh, Leanne, have you ever had a chance to play in Hamilton? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah she yeah, she did I Levity recently, too. Club. Yeah. Levity. Oh, did you? Okay. And, and so, what do you think of Hamilton audiences? Oh, I love it. I, I like, I am from, like, I grew up in Burlington, but all my family lived in Hamilton. So I like Hamilton a lot. And uh, yeah, I really like the Hamilton audiences. They're, they're fun and laid back and you can, yeah, you can get away with anything in Hamilton pretty much, I think. Well, and that's, that's an saying. awesome, uh, awesome comedy club, that Levity Comedy Club. It's too bad it's not open. I do have a ton of cousins and they all come up to the show too, so. Yeah. <laughs> all right, who's, uh, who's top, I've lost track. Whose topic are we on? Uh, I think I it's Leanne's now. Oh, you, Leanne! This was the last one, yeah. All right, here's a nice summertime uh, topic for you on this Friday at 420 Lamb, Aladdin. What's the best amusement park ride? Oh. The best amusement park. You can name a specific, just a type of ride, or you can name a specific one at a specific park, whatever you think. What, what, do, you, what do you, if you're going for to get your ride on, what are you getting on? You know what? Like, I just, I totally can't do the up and downs anymore, but I've always really liked, you know, like the Gravitron? The one that oh, they drop the floor out? The yeah. wall? That's yeah. the best. <laughs> you try to move it. <laughs> you can't, I like that one. That's that all, is that's a cool ride. Yeah, the Gravitron. Yeah, see, Good answer. I have uh, uh, <laughs> Gravitron's a bad memory for me because that's <laughs> I've never been on it, but when I was a kid, I used to do karate with my dad, and then we were at a fair, and he went on a Gravitron, and that was at least his excuse. He threw out his back, and he quit karate, and I I had to quit because because I wanted to do it with my dad. So the Gravitron, I direct I relate directly with <laughs> not being able to do karate with my dad. You could have been a kung fu master. Yeah, but instead, I have three stripes on my white belt. <laughs> Here's here's something, you, you, and you may never get on a Gravitron again after you hear this, but uh, I was at the CNE, we were on one, and the, the per person, like three people over from me, uh, threw up mid row <sighs> And what happens is they kind of, like, that, it projectile out, and then it kind of splats against the wall, and it sticks to the wall, right? Because it's just like gravity. It just holds the vomit there. Now, through whatever luck, the, the the station beside the person who threw up was was empty. Otherwise, I just kept thinking it was like right in your face, and now it's stuck to you until this damn ride ends. 
what a horrible, horrible way to go. Um, so just be careful. How close, is the, how close is the puke to you? There's three people over. Yeah, I I could see it. I, I witnessed the whole thing happen. It was it was just oh, oh it was terrible. You didn't want to throw up then. No, there's a lot no. going on, Manos. Yeah. yeah, you're standing your head against the wall, you know, and you're just watching Holding this you expire. And you're like going, wow. I mean, it I was, was crazy. Gravi- I was on the graviton once, and uh, it was spinning, and I was I realized I can't handle circle rides anymore or at all, <laughs> and I'm like, like I felt, I would felt like. I greened out and I thought I was going to throw up too. And I was like, the ride's finally slowing down. It's done. My bro- I remember my brother was actually worried about me because I was like 12 years old. And my brother's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's almost over. It's okay. And I'm like, okay. okay. And then the guy, Otto, whatever, from the Simpsons is like in the middle playing Metallica goes thinking like he's going to make our day because it's three tickets to get on this ride. Right? So he goes, do you guys want another free ride? Everybody, all the kids like, yeah. And you're like, no. I'm like, he goes, you guys want to go again? He's out the kids like, yeah. And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop the ride. Let me off. And then you can continue. I can't handle another go. That's what I'm yelling. Obviously, no one hears me. Boom. We go for another round. <laughs> Boom. Ruin my day. Oh, but no, yeah. uh, is that your favorite ride then? No, uh, the haunted house one where you're on a like a uh, like a little roller coaster to dr- so you go through a haunted house, but on top of that, I don't have to walk. I'm just on this on these tracks, just going like getting scared, but also with the comfort of just sitting down. It's perfect. It's, it's the perfect ride. Genius. If you think about it. Genius. All right, we have grocery we have stores. Time. I think we have time for one more topic on Friday at 420. Our special guest, Leanne Maladin. Uh, from her vacation home up uh, north of North Bay. Thank you so much for joining us, Leanne. It's awesome that you have. Uh, we're going to uh, wrap up on this topic. I'll start with you, Patrick Coppolino. Favorite barbecue food? Mm. Favorite barbecue food? I don't know. I like anything barbecue. Don't, really. don't say chicken parm. Yeah, <laughs> chicken parm on the barbecue. I have to try that this summer. Um, I don't know. A- anything, really anything. It's crazy how different everything tastes, especially vegetables. Barbecued vegetables versus like real vegetables. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, oh, gonna go with, I'm gonna go with the healthy choice: vegetables. <laughs> all the meats in the world, and you <laughs> chose grilled vegetables. <laughs> all right, excellent choice. Uh, Manoli, what about you? Favorite barbecue food? I, you know, I, I, just a classic cheeseburger is uh my favorite thing. But what is more important, as long as the person that's running the barbecue is very like um territorial over his barbecue then that that way i know he knows what he's doing if you try to get like in there like hey can i it's like oh whoa 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 <laughs> he cares you want to know that the guy cares yeah so you go up and ask for hey can i have the tongs if he gives them to you you're like i'm getting out of here yeah i leave i leave every time <laughs> i go and i get on the graviton <laughs> Uh, Leanne Maladin, you must be doing some barbecuing up there at the cottage. What uh, What's your favorite barbecued food? Um, well, everything is better on the barbecue. You're right. So <laughs> just, just anything, like, obviously, like, steak, like a big, thick steak is my first choice. But even hot dogs are really good on the barbecue. Mm-hmm. It's like a whole different thing, you know? It's just like, yeah. I've been I, I, bacon on the barbecue. Barbecue what? bacon. Barbecued bacon. It's hard to balance it on this. So it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to flip it, but it's happened. No, it's no. delicious. Um, here's a little something you can try. I've mentioned it on the show before. Um, they call it a picnic burger. I don't know if you've ever had one, but you do a cheeseburger uh, and then a barbecued hot dog, and you put the hot dog on top of the burger on the bun. With a slice of bacon. Boom. Boom, with some bacon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> uh, that sounds fantastic. Uh, Leanne, tell us a little bit about what you got coming up in the world. What, what are you, you going to do once the pandemic's over? Are you going to get back out and get busy? Or are you, you going to keep teaching? What are you doing? Yeah, um, well, the, I, I'm, com- I'm coming out to levity as soon as things happen. <laughs> as soon as things open up, got to get out there. And I got, uh, uh, yeah, just... The only thing that I know is going to be happening is once things open up the third Friday of every month, um, I've got my show, The Mary Janes of Comedy, 
at the Comedy Bar in Toronto. It's the longest running all female comedy or stand up comedy show in Canada. So uh, that is happening the third Friday of every month, but uh, when, whenever, I don't know exactly yet. Uh, that's very cool. Um, uh, the Mary Janes of Comedy. Who does that with you? So name us some of the other ladies that perform with you. So, um, so the the monthly show, it's always different people. So I always have like I'll have a headliner, so like um, uh, Martha Chavez, Shannon Laverty, Aisha Brown, those girls. And um, then I have like a couple feature performers, and uh, then I have a couple of newcomers. So it's uh, yeah, it's always a mix, always a different show. Um, very fun night. That is awesome. We look forward to that at the Comedy Bar when it, when things get reopened. Of course, uh, teaching at Second City, that's very cool. And uh, being able to spend some of your pandemic at a cottage way up north, that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just growing <laughs> my hair. Other than that, that's all I'm working uh, on. Now. How can people follow you on social media, Leanne? Um, I'm at Joke Lady Ha Ha on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, that's where you can find me. Yeah. All right. At Joke Lady Ha Ha. Please do that. Please follow our friend Leanne. She's so awesome. And we loved having her on the show. Uh, Patrick, I understand. I know Levity's not open yet, but the Anchor Bar had the patio open, uh, right? Mm, yes. This this weekend, the patio just opened there. So come down. That's awesome. It's, it's honestly like the biggest patio downtown Hamilton. It's really nice. So go check it out once it's not raining. Maybe they're open today. I don't, I don't actually know. But <laughs> check and it then, out. Now that you. You can get out to the patio. You should do that. Yeah. yeah. And then you can look at the Levity logo while you're eating some Anchor Bar food and you wait till <laughs> we open. Um, and also, speaking of Levity, uh, uh, we're going to open no matter what. But if you want to help out, we do have a GoFundMe to help uh, with the opening process. Uh, there's been information at the bottom of the screen this whole time. Or you can go to levitycomedyclub.com. There's a link for that. Uh, it's been awesome so far. We got a lot of support uh, in the last few weeks, which is amazing. Um, and other than that, I want to give a shout out to Ryan Sim as well. He watches every time we go live stream, and he he's Does been he really? commenting in the chat. He said my story about doing karate with my dad sounds like the sequel to Napoleon Dynamite. So maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll have to make that movie. So hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in on Facebook. For everybody who tuned in on Facebook today, we really appreciate it. Uh, Manoli, what do you want to throw at us before we uh, let you go and send you back to your tissue? <laughs> there's another cool uh it's also cool uh, we're also on patreon right Patrick? yes yeah that's been at the bottom of the screen as well you can become and, uh, a patron at patreon manolis has no idea what it is but <laughs> all i know is that we we haven't got we we haven't got any money <laughs> we we don't have right? a single patron yet <laughs> nothing that's what's so funny we did it last week when we had russell on and we're thinking like oh russell peters a lot of people will watch blah 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 zero i got we got we got zero dollars you we got a bunch of money for levity but us as people screw us so thank you so our fan, thank you fans so really what we're throwing out there on this edition of friday at 420 is we are looking you know what here here's this is how you do this guys and i now i realize i'm in the business so i know these things but you don't uh here's what you do you say the first person who becomes a patron you're going to be a guest on the show oh there you go right That's actually that's actually a, that's, that's awesome. really cool. You jump in. You, <laughs> you, actually, you become a patron, a supporter of Friday at 420. We're going to have you on our next Zoom call, and we'll have you on the show, and I you think, can join these ragamuffins. I think you just changed my date life, too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been a blast. I love hanging out with you. Uh, thank you so much if you've been watching on Facebook. Thank you if you're listening on Funny 820. Thank you, Liam Aladdin. You were a joy, and we look forward to having you back on the show again okay, soon. That would be awesome. All right. Be well. Patrick Manolis. Yeah, I'll probably have to see you guys again in the future. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. Uh, you've been listening to Friday at 420 on Funny 820. Until we get a chance to talk to you again in seven days, have an awesome weekend! Woo!